Don't get me wrong, I am excited as hell about Ketanji Brown Jackson ascending to the Supreme Court. She'll be just the sixth woman to sit on the nation's highest court and only the third African-American. She'll bring the gender balance one justice away from reflecting the actual percentages of the population, more or less. She's apparently fantastically intelligent and pragmatic and qualified. And it'll mark the first time, I think, in my entire fucking life where a Supreme Court justice is going to be replaced by someone to their left politically. It's an event so deserving of celebration that I feel like an asshole nitpicking the ceremonial end of it. I should just be overjoyed at all the historic firsts that I get to witness here. But when Biden formally nominated her on Friday, she opened up her acceptance speech by saying, quote, I must begin these very brief remarks by thanking God for delivering me to this point in my professional journey. My life has been blessed beyond measure, and I do know that one can only make it this far by faith. End quote. So I kind of have to address it. Now, yeah, look, I'm willing to give her a pass on the first sentence and the first half of the second one. I mean, I kind of feel like when you graduate magna cum laude from Harvard, you, you get to like stop being humble. But whatever, it, it's a political appointment that'll come with a confirmation fight. A bit of humility and pandering is entirely understandable and begrudgingly acceptable. And, and, and who knows? Maybe she actually believes this shit, too. It kind of conflicts with the whole ability to keenly discern facts thing that we kind of look for in a judge. But in America, you take what you can get in that department. But that last little bit sticks in my craw. Right. I know that you can only come this far by faith. Of course, I, I want to give her all due credit here. So let's take the most positive possible interpretation. She's not saying an atheist could never come this far. I, I, or actually, she, she is unavoidably saying that. But that's not the point she's trying to make. Given the context of talking about how blessed her life has been, the most reasonable interpretation is that her point is intended to be that her career was empowered by her faith, that God had her back the whole time, that, that he was rooting for her and laying a path for her and guiding her towards a higher purpose. She's saying that faith provided her with support when the stresses of her education and her job overwhelmed her. She's saying, in other words, that religious belief gave her an advantage over folks like you and me. And that's what needs to be addressed. I mean, you know, sure, a liberal genius should probably be able to think of a less exclusionary way of expressing humility and Christianity. But let, let's set aside any condemnation here. It's worth addressing simply from the perspective of its truth value. Right. I mean, I mean, believing that the universe's author set out an important role for you in, in the plot probably does come in handy from time to time. Right. Assuming she's sincere in her beliefs, it probably did help Katanji Brown Jackson get through some pretty tough times in her life, thinking about how the omnipotent guy had her back. So, you know, do Christians have this superpower? That, that seems like an important question to answer just if you're trying to sell people on atheism in general. And of course, just like every other claimed advantage of faith, this one disappears as soon as you shift your focus, because the other side of that coin is hitting the ground before you realize that God isn't going to catch you. And let's face it, the, the, the overwhelming majority of people don't make it all the way to the Supreme Court, regardless of their faith and what they think God has planned for them. I mean, I couldn't have made it here without my faith. That sounds great if you're the quarterback that just won the Super Bowl, but not so much if you're literally any other quarterback. Is failure easier to handle when you assumed that success was preordained the whole time? Is, is failure easier to handle when you assume that the failure itself was preordained? How, how does that belief inspire you? And what does it inspire you to do? And look, even if we could somehow filter out all the differences and measure how often faith helped and how often it hindered, and we could somehow weigh those two things against each other and we were to discover that it helped more often, that still doesn't matter if it isn't true. Anything propped up on a lie stands to fall apart the second that the lie falls apart. Basing one's coping mechanism around something that is, at best, unproven and highly questionable just strikes me as a bad play to begin with. Of course, it may still be technically true that she couldn't have got where she was without faith. I, I have a hard time imagining a self-identified atheist getting nominated to the Supreme Court. But that's not a problem with the atheism. That's a problem with prejudice. And ultimately, I have every hope and every reason to believe that welcoming Katanji Brown Jackson onto the court is a step towards solving that problem.